Whether you're heading to Disney World with a group of two or a group of 11, this complete Genie Plus guide will help you make the most out of your Disney vacation. In 2022, my family of eight, along with grandparents, headed to Disneyland and we made all the Genie Plus mistakes. We listened to a friend who said, you won't need Genie Plus, didn't really research what it was about, and we realized quickly that the rest of the world was traveling to Disney at the same time. Hello, post-pandemic traveling rush. And so when we were planning our 2023 September trip, I was going to make the most out of using Genie Plus. In this video, I'm gonna give you the 411. Are people actually saying that anymore? I don't know. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to get you all the tips, tricks, tutorials on how to use Genie Plus to help you know what it is, how to make the most of it, and how to score those top rides using Genie Plus. Now, when I was booking my own vacation and doing the research for my family, I noticed that all these Genie Plus videos only had information on they using Genie Plus with one person, maybe two, maybe they had one kid and usually they were young. So it really didn't impact those big rides. Here's how it worked for my family of eight plus grandparents and an aunt or an uncle. At most, our group was 11 and our smallest group was 10. So I'm going to show you everything that we did and we used what worked. At the time of travel, our kids were 12, 11, eight, five, three, and almost two. Did I get them all? My parents came for part of the time and my sister-in-law and mother-in-law, we went for eight total days. Uh, we spent two days in each park. We really got to use our strategies over two different days to kind of see how it was working, got to kind of test for each part. Are you ready to learn everything? Let's go. Okay, now that you know a little bit about my family and what we were doing, who was involved in all this Genie Plus using, let's start with what actually is Genie Plus. It's a paid service to kind of skip the line. If you have been to Disney World a long time ago or Disneyland, they had the old Fast Pass system where you had to go to a ride, get like a little printout ticket and it would give you a time to come back. You could use that and also go in the Fast Pass line. Well, Genie Plus with their Lightning Lanes has changed and now you can book it with your phone, which is great because you're not having to run around the park. Again, if you have lots of kids or little kids, you don't wanna be running across the park back and forth. Using your phone is a great benefit. But the con is that some people think that they're on their phones all the time. Don't worry, I'm gonna teach you my strategy so that you're not on the phone all the time. I really wasn't, so I book my lightning lanes and get back to spending time with my family. Genie Plus allows you to get these lightning lanes. You're basically booking a time for a lightning lane for specific rides at each park. Each park has a list of rides and I would encourage you to go and check them out. On the app you can see, I'll put a little thing right here that you can see, like you can tell which ones have lightning lanes available. Know that it's specific rides and attractions. It's not every attraction or ride at the park, but it is a lot of those heavy hitters that you want. Let's kind of back up a moment here. There's four ways to ride a ride at a Disney park. There is the standby line. You walk up, you stand in line, you wait through the queue, and then you get to get on the ride. It could be a two hour wait for something like Rise of the Resistance or Slinky Dog Dash, or it could be like a five minute wait for something like Mad Tea Party. No joke, we rode that like four times in a row and I was so dizzy. I told my daughter Cohen, who loves the ride, that like, mommy is gonna sit off this one because it was so crazy and we could just walk on. But again, wanting to ride all the different rides, standby was is one option. The next way to be able to ride a ride is virtual queue. And there are currently at the time of filming two rides that use virtual queue, Tron and Magic Kingdom, and Guardians of the Galaxy in Epcot. Now these two rides, you cannot actually walk up and go get in line. You have to join the virtual queue in order to ride this ride. Now there's individual lightning lanes, but we will get to that next. With the virtual queue, the booking becomes available at 7 a.m. You can book your place in the line. It gives you a boarding group and then you will get a notification on your phone when your boarding group is called and you then have an hour to return. Now the one thing about virtual queues is even with one, you still could wait in a 45 minute line when it's called. Tron, we didn't have that experience. We were able to pretty much walk onto the ride, maybe five to 10 minutes, but Guardians of the Galaxy, we did wait about 45 minutes in that virtual queue 
which is why some people buy the lightning, individual lightning lanes. Again, we'll get to that in a moment. You are, have two times during the day you can book a virtual queue at 7 a.m. and then they will sometimes drop a second one around 1 p.m. I believe. That 1 p.m. drop, you must be in the park. Uh, to book that virtual queue. The next way to ride is an individual lightning lane. And this, there is one per park except Magic Kingdom. There are two rides that are the most popular ride, I would say, for the park that has an individual lightning lane. Now these you can, you have to buy separately, hence the term individual. You buy an individual lightning lane that gives you a time to ride that one ride. So in Magic Kingdom, it is Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. In Animal Kingdom, it is Avatar Flight of Passage. In Epcot, it is Guardians of the Galaxy. In Hollywood Studios, it is Rise of the Resistance. The cost of that individual lightning lane varies. Seven Dwarfs Mine Train ran us about 10 11 dollars I would say and but rise of the resistance was closer to 20 dollars and then they can vary kind of from there so some rides are more some are less they are again a way to skip the line the individual lightning lanes you can book if you are staying on Disney property you can book it right at 7 a.m. if you're not like my family was not I had to wait to book it when um, the park opened and then we could book it. And that actually worked for me. We didn't have any issue booking lightning lanes. We were there in September and it was busy, but nothing like if you were during the holidays, it might be a little bit trickier to get those individual lightning lanes. One more thing about lightning, individual lightning lanes, you can buy just an individual lightning lane or you can buy just Genie Plus or you can buy both. That's kind of your choice about how much money you want to spend, add on your ticket, or if that rides a priority. For my family, spending $10 a person to skip a two hour line to do say Seven Doors Mine Train was definitely worth it, but it's definitely your family's choice and what, what's right, what feels right for you. The next way to ride rides is the Lightning Lanes, which is related to Genie Plus, which is what this whole video is about. So you, we have arrived, Lightning Lanes. How do Lightning Lanes work? Well, you can book your first Lightning Lane for Disney World, it is different for Disneyland, but at 7 a.m. And we're gonna go over the strategies to get those best Lightning Lanes, but first let's just understand how the whole process works. How do Lightning Lanes work. What happens is you want to book that first lightning lane right at 7 a.m. It gives you a return time for the ride that you are riding. It is an hour window and you need to go and you scan in. Um, you can set up a magic band or a magic mobile. You can use your, your phone to scan in or if you have your park ticket you can also use that. Um, you scan in and you can immediately book your next lightning lane as soon as you scan in. That's the way to get another lightning lane. You can only book one at a time. Now, my mistake in Disneyland is thinking, oh, if I have one, if I if it's 7 a.m. and I booked a 3 p.m. ride uh, like Slinky Dog Dash, I can't book anything until that 3 p.m. So I would never book that 3 p.m., first of all, or uh, and we would miss out on that ride. There is a two hour cool down. What it means is two hours after you book that lightning lane, you can book your next lightning lane, even if you haven't used it yet. This is a great way because people can stack lightning lanes, booking them for later in the evening, have a bunch of those heavy hitters. Maybe you do a slower morning, maybe you do some shows, maybe you uh, have character dining or do rides that have shorter lines and then stack those other lightning lanes together. That's one way to do it. Remember when I said you could book your lightning lane at 7 a.m.? That doesn't mean 9 a.m. you can book your lightning lane. That two hour clock doesn't start until the park opens. If I book a lightning lane at 7 a.m. for 10.30, if the park opens at nine o'clock, I can't book my lightning lane again at 9 a.m. I have to wait till I tap in, or if I'm waiting until a little bit later, I can book it at 11 a.m., two hours after the park opened that day. I know Disney made it confusing, but that is how it works. You can use the two hour cooldown, you can tap in and do it. You are only able to book a lightning lane for one time per ride per day. So if you use a lightning lane to ride Peter Pan's flight, the only way to ride Peter Pan's flight again that day is to hop in the standby queue. Let's look at a couple examples before we move on to how to score the best rides. This might help you get a feel for booking lightning lanes and using that two hour cool down or not. Three examples for you, here we go. Let's say you're heading to Animal Kingdom Park at 7 a.m. You get up and book Navi River Journey and it gives you a return time of 8.35 to 9.35 a.m. The park opens at 
8.30. So once you get into the park, you head straight back to Navi River Journey, scan in to ride the ride, and then you can book your next lightning lane right then for, say, Kilimanjaro Safaris. And then again, once you hop on Kilimanjaro Safaris, you can book another lightning lane. Another example would be, say, the next day you head to Epcot. Again, you get up at 7 a.m. and you book the Frozen Ride. You get a return window of 9.35 to 10.35 a.m. And the park opens at 9. So you get into the park, you visit Minnie Mouse in front of the park, and then head back to ride Frozen. So once you tap in, say, at 9.40, you can decide between booking Remy's or Test Track. Remy shows a return time of 4.30 and Test Track shows 1.30. Now what you choose is based on your priorities. However, note that Remy's will often book out and if they're already at 4.35, you might wanna go ahead and book Remy's and use that two hour cooldown. You're gonna need it in both cases, but in two hours, Remy's could be gone. So if you really wanna ride it, grab that one. You decide to book Remy's for 4.35, you can go do some rides, eat yummy food, and then book your next lightning lane at 11.40 a.m. because you know that you booked the first one or the other one at 9.40 in the morning. So at that time, you can then book Test Track or Soren or any other rides you'd like at that time. And you still have Remy's waiting for you at 4.30. Okay, one final example. You're heading into Hollywood Studios. So you book your first lightning lane at 7 a.m. for Slinky Dog Dash, and you get a return time of 11.30 to 12.30. The park opens at 8.30. You decide to rope drop some other rides, see characters, and grab a snack or a coffee. At 10.30, you book your next lightning lane, even though you haven't scanned into your first one because of that two-hour cooldown or 120 minutes after the park opening has taken place. So there's a couple examples that will hopefully help you kind of visualize using the systems. The nice thing is the app has updated since my family went and it does show you the next time that you can book a lightning lane so you don't have to fully remember. Though I suggest setting a timer to remind you to snag your next one when you're using that two hour cooldown since uh, it's a bit like a time warp when you're in the parks. Once you've booked a lightning lane, you can modify that lightning lane and I highly re recommend you modify instead of just cancel and book another one. Even if you are like, oh, we don't want to do that ride. There are three little dots. When you see you've booked a lightning lane, there's three little dots. You tap them and then you can modify plan. Now, the reason I'm saying this is one, you could find an earlier time and we've done it a couple times. Uh, Rob over at Ear Scouts, who I love, go watch his videos, subscribe to his channel, but he calls it playing the Disney Genie slots. And so he'll tap modify plan and you can see it's still holding your spot in that booked lightning lane, but he can you can see if maybe you can grab an earlier time. And we did that a time or two for rides. Um, you also might say, oh wait, I'm gonna book, there's a lightning lane available right now. I'm gonna book that and then I'm gonna, as soon as we tap into that, I'll then book this other lightning lane that I want. Maybe you wanna do that, which we definitely did if we were like, oh, let's hop on to Alien Swirling Saucers now, but we will book Minnie and Mickey as soon as we tap in. And we did that to just kind of skip some lines that way. The reason I'm saying to modify instead of cancel is because once you book a lightning lane, that two hour cooldown time is starting, that clock's running. So it, if you get it, if you modify, Again, that time is running. If you cancel, it starts over. That two hour clock is not running anymore. And you want it to be running so that you can get to booking your next lightning lane. All right, so you understand that you're gonna book lightning lanes. Let's talk about snagging the best lightning lanes. Now, this is something that when you see your list, you, you'll notice on your tip board that you can see just the lightning lanes, but they are listed alphabetical and you have to scroll through. Now, if again, I'm gonna use Slinky Dog Dash because that one was one of the ones that was the trickiest to get, then I would have to scroll all the way up to, or all the way down to S to find Slinky Dog Dash and people in the meantime who scroll faster or do whatever are getting it faster. We want to set up your preferences so that you have one ride pinned to the top. When you are in the app, it'll show you a space where it says my day. There is also a get started now button. It will prompt you when you purchase Genie Plus and I would suggest that you set it up right then. We'll talk about that 7 a.m. booking in a moment, but you're gonna set it up and you're only gonna select that one top thing that you want to book first for because it'll pin it again to the top and you're not having to scroll through. You 
using this strategy, we were able to get those really high priority virtual queues, but also we got the high priority rides like Slinky Dog Dash, Peter Pan for very early in the morning and we weren't wasting our time having to use that two hour cool down right away while riding the most popular rides. Once it was booked, I would then modify and make my plan so the net I changed what my top ride is uh, up there. And maybe I put one or two rides at this time because I've already booked the first one and I'm gonna see which one is better option unless we had a specific plan. But usually I would just pick one or two. And then again, I would then book my next lightning. I would have it ready. So once I tapped into the ride, I could book it without again having to scroll and waste that time and it was ready. And so I was just updating what our next priorities might be. And we could see that instead of scrolling through everything of rides I've already ridden or, you know, characters we didn't want to see. And I just wanted to focus on characters we did want to see or rides we did. So setting up that tip board will help you score those good rides. Which, by the way, we want to start our day getting those good rides first. So let's talk about that strategy next. When you're trying to snag the best lightning lanes, you want to set yourself up for success each morning. Five to 10 minutes before 7 a.m., I would start to get the process going. The first thing you want is priorities. What is your family's priorities? for rides and also what is the park's most popular rides, rides that sell out quickly in Genie Plus that are more difficult to get. Now, each park has those rides. I would say in Magic Kingdom, it is Jungle Cruise, which is very strange to me. It's a great ride, but I don't know. But Jungle Cruise and Peter Pan uh, in Animal Kingdom, it is Navi River Journey. Everything else was pretty easy to get. Maybe the Minnie and Mickey's Outpost, um, meeting those characters, that was another high priority but could go faster, Lightning Lane, because it's one of the only places you could snag a Lightning Lane to meet Minnie and Mickey. Uh, in Hollywood Studios, it is definitely Slinky Dog Dash, and then it kind of next maybe is Tower of Terror and Minnie and Mickey's Runaway Railway. And in Epcot, it is Frozen and Ratatouille. Now, if your family doesn't care about riding Tower of Terror, then maybe it's not on your list and it doesn't need to be a priority and you could set your priorities for different things. But knowing these are what's gonna go fast. So if we really wanna ride it, especially ones like Slinky Dog Dash, Frozen or Remy's, you're gonna wanna make those a priority and book them first thing. You wake up early, you're getting your, you know your priorities. The next thing you're going to do is purchase Genie Plus and get it set up. So remember that we just talked about pinning that main ride to the top. So if you're at Epcot that very first day, I got up, I set up my tip board so that only Frozen as our first ride. And so that was my very first lightning lane selection preference pinned to the top so that I was ready to go. The next thing is I used a world clock. Now my watch has one, so I had my phone ready to go and I could watch on my watch, have see the seconds countdown. Again, really intense, but um, as soon as my watch was counting down in the 50, you know 57 second, and it was just turning to seven o'clock, I could refresh and book that first one ready to go in out and done. And we were able to get very early late lightning lanes for all the big hitters, Slinky Dog, Navi River Journey, Frozen, Remy's, uh, cause we did Remy one day and Frozen the other day. Um, but those kind of priorities really helped us get that big heavy hitter out of the way. That's how I booked those really top ones. And then once we got into the park again, we had our game plan of what the next rides are, knowing what was popular at that park and what our priorities were. Then we just let it we just kind of went with the flow of the park. Where were uh, the ride lines shorter? We could book, and if we were using our two hour cool down, maybe we'd go visit some characters, maybe we would see some shorter lines, but we were using Genie Plus to get those big rides locked in that we wanted to do and then fill in with other rides and other things. The nice thing was that if we did have a longer time, we also could sit down and relax knowing that we have we we don't have to spend that hour waiting in line. We could sit in air conditioning, eating snacks, we had some coloring things for the kids, but that we were really able to enjoy our trip. With that Genie Plus, while it was an extra cost, it was something my family budgeted in because we knew we really wanted to make the most of it. We wanted to do some of the big rides we wanted to see shows and characters. We knew we didn't want to be spending a lot of time in lines, but we also didn't want to miss out on things. 
My family lives in the Seattle area. It is a long, expensive flight to fly six kids to Florida, so it's not something that we are doing every year. We really wanted to make the most of our time. It was something worth budgeting in. We found other ways to save, like staying off property, Stay tuned, that video will be on the channel. Make sure you hit subscribe to catch that one about why you would stay off property. Because we use these strategies, we were able to get our lightning lanes booked, modify here and there, and just get back to spending time with the kids and be focused. It meant, like I said, we were able to stay in air conditioning and eat a nice lunch, not worrying about missing out on a ride because we had lightning lanes booked for shows and characters and all those things. I hope this video was helpful for you that you feel confident using these Genie Plus strategies to have a great vacation or no, maybe it's not for your family. That is definitely okay. What you decide where you wanna save money or where you wanna spend your time. With that, I hope you have a magical trip and I'll see you in the next video.